What? You did not have a fish. Oh my god. Come on. Show me, man. So I've yet to have a bite back here since I've been fishing this place. Oh my god, bro. Force a 10 pounder. Please get the net. Please get the net. Oh! Hey yo, what's going on guys? Welcome to another video. Today, I am doing a video that you guys were begging about in the comment section. And it is over this deer here. Chatter donkey. Chatter bait right here. So pretty much you guys have been commenting that in the last three videos. And I'm going to show you guys a way to catch a bigger fish. And if you guys continue to throw this bait, I don't care if you've thrown it, you know, only a few times. If you start throwing this bait a lot, I promise you, you will catch bigger fish. But fish, but the first thing that I obviously want to go over is the rod and reel. We're about to tie this bait on right now. Um, I keep it very basic. As you guys know, my favorite rod and reel is just a simple, you know, seven foot to seven foot three medium heavy. That's just what I go with. That's per my personal preference. That's what I like. I got Adam Bob. Adam Bob, that's that's a new one, man. I got him next. His might be different, you know, but that's what I like is around a seven foot, seven foot three, medium heavy. That's what I go to. Um, as in the reel, I usually stick to like a seven one to one or a seven or like all the way up to an eight one to one gear ratio of reel. Um, I keep it very basic. I usually slow it down in my hand. Uh, if I need to speed my bait up, you know, I obviously do it with my hand. A lot of people are gonna you know experiment with gear, uh, different gear ratio reels, but you know, I just keep it very basic. If you guys are wondering what knot I am tying simple uni knot if you guys want to see a video on this be sure to leave a comment in the comment section below it is stronger than a polymer knot so i'd love to make a video on this and it's what i've done for a while now as in for the line what i would really recommend is around 15 pound fluorocarbon this is actually 15 pound cigar fluorocarbon um really great line uh this is what i've used for like the past you know five years and that's what i really enjoy this is actually in physics I buy Seaguar. If you guys are wondering, like if you're going to the shop, it's the yellow label. Um, it's not called yellow label, but it's that yellow packet Seaguar. Really great fluorocarbon. It's gonna be a little bit more expensive, but it's gonna be worth it in the long run. And uh, if you guys are wondering what swim bait I'm using, this is simply just a little dipper by Reaction Innovations in white trash. I could not tell you how many packs of these I've gone through. This, that bait right there is just killer. And this is just a simple, uh, this is the standard Z-Man chowder bait. It's the ones, as you guys can tell by that head right there. You get these in the store. This is a uh, white and chartreuse, which is perfect for this dirty water that we're fishing. It actually has a gold blade, which I really love when I'm fishing, you know, muddy water. So I'm gonna simply rig this up right here. And boom, got your old chatterbait right there. That is a big fish catching machine. So let's go ahead and see what we can do with it. So a lot of you guys have asked about this bait. A lot of you guys have asked, how do you throw it? How do you rig it? So I just talked about how you rig it. But I really want to talk about how I throw my chatterbaits and how I get a lot of bites on a chatterbait in general. So here I'm at the river today. And as you guys can tell, there's a bunch of cypress trees right out here. And there's a bunch of cover on the bank as in lay downs and stuff of that sort of nature. And, uh, you know, these fish are looking to chase bait and looking to eat something. This couldn't be a better bait to throw. Especially throwing around these lay downs, I really love throwing it. Just because I can sit here, I can just slow roll it. And uh, usually if that fish is in that lay down, he's gonna come out and eat this bait. So I got my old chowder bait right here. This is what I'm gonna do, very simple. I'm gonna cast my bait out there, all right? And just simply reel it, all right? Simply reel it. But this, this is the thing, depending on the gear ratio of your reel, you're gonna have to experiment with how fast you're reeling it. I like to keep a chowder bait pretty slow and I pop my rod every once in a while. So what that's gonna do, so you throw your bait right up on that, that tree right there. And I'm slow rolling this bait, all right? Pretty slow. Every once in a while, I'm gonna sit here and pop my rod or pop my rod up. So what that's gonna do is that bait's just cruising. You know, it's just going, you know, just at a basic speed. And all of a sudden, that bait's gonna pop. So if a fish is following that bait, maybe they're not just chomping this day. You know, maybe they're a little bit slower. And say they're nosing up to that bait, they're following it, and they're just not gonna eat it. You know, they're just gonna follow that thing back to the boat. But if you pop your rod and give it that sporadic movement, that might allow that fish to commit. So that's really what I key in on. Another way to throw this bait, simply just throw it out there. And I've experimented with this a lot because I'm a big chatterbait fan. I love a chatterbait. So I'm gonna try to throw it wherever I go, <laughs> literally wherever I go. It's simply throwing your bait out there and letting it hit the bottom. You're gonna need to be careful depending on what, you know, what you're fishing around and what's really near you. But I'll let that bait hit the bottom and I'm just slow reeling that thing. Just popping my rod and pretty much keeping contact, just kind of like you would with that square bill. If you guys watched the last tip video, if you guys haven't watched it, 
go check it out. I'll leave the link below. But um, really keeping contact with that bottom and that structure that you're fishing. So you're, you know, you're bumping along all those trees and the lay downs, everything. Maybe even you're ripping this thing through grass, which is one of my favorite things to do with the chatterbait is ripping it through grass. But the important thing is to make sure you're hitting that cover and really make sure you're hitting it and keeping contact because that fish is going to be up on that cover, whether he's under it or he's pushed up on the back of it. Either way, he's going to be on that. So you want to keep this bait knocking that stuff. You don't really want to keep it, you know, over it. You want to keep contact. So you can pretty much reel that bait right over that cover without, you know, touching it if you want to literally minimize, you know, how many times you're going to get hooked up. So you are going to get hooked up a lot, but uh, I really prefer keeping contact with that cover that you're fishing. And if you're ripping it through grass, I know I don't have any grass here to really demonstrate what I would do, um, but say I'm fishing like an isolated, you know, grass flat. Say I throw my bait up there on that grass. And even in these ponds, there's a lot of grass and there's a lot of crap. What I really like to do is, you know, I'm standardly reeling my bait, I'm popping my rod, but you realize you have a little bit of grass on there. So what you're gonna do is you're just gonna stroke your rod up a few times. So you're, you know, your bait's gonna get a lot of grass on it, but when you rip that rod up, what it's gonna do is it's just gonna throw that grass right off of it. So that is another really, really, really good key way to catch them on a chatterbait. I really love throwing a chatterbait in dirty water. That's, you know, what I tend to do most of the time. Um, I'm usually not throwing it in clear water. It's got a lot of vibration, a lot of vibration. If I'm really looking for a good day to throw a chatterbait, any day that I would throw a spinnerbait, I would throw a chatterbait. You know, it's it's going to be one of those things where, you know, say it's really cloudy outside, this fish are roaming really hard, and then you got a little bit of wind pushing around this corner, and you're wanting to throw a moving bait. I'm telling you, I I just it's hard for me not to pick up a chatterbait. It's just a really good bait if you're really searching for fish, and those fish are around here, you know, chasing bait. And it's just a really good search bait. Now, let's go out and go catch some fish. I am gonna warn you guys, I have been fishing a lot today and I have not had a bite on the old chowder donkey today, but I really wanted to make this video for you guys and provide some tips and value because I know you guys really wanted it. But we did catch some giants today, so do not click off on this video. Let's get it started. Bite you. Got the tail hanging out of his mouth. All right. Wow, look, look, there's your crawl from last week. That's pretty good one, ain't it? Let me see. That's not bad. Not bad fish. He's got belly on him. Bro, in the tree. Oh my god, dude. Get him. Oh, <laughs> dude, that's a pretty good one. Oh, I gotta whip out the camera for this. That's a decent fish. Adam Bob. God, you guys just kill it. And your crawl is from last week still in the tree. Dude, that's freaking sweet, bro. That's not a bad fish at all. Good job. You guys just killed it right there. I just missed one right before both of you guys. Dude, you scared me, man. I thought you were about to hook me. That's a good one, too. Not a bad one, man. Not a bad one, Bob. I'm just glad you're catching them, dude. Come show the camera here in a minute. Good job, man. Not a bad fish. If you look at him, something try to eat him. I know. You can see it right there. Yeah. Like a gator or something. Good job. There he is. Golly. Oh, he came off. There ain't no way that was a bass. In about 10 pounds. <laughs> oh my God, yes. Oh, yeah. Oh my God, dude. Is it bass? Bass. I swore I had a mudfish, dude. That was a good one. That's one I always miss here. There we go, baby. Quality fish on that crawl right there. That's quality. That's a good way to start it out right there, boys. With an all beautiful river bass. <laughs> There's my little one with the jacked up tail. Oh, golly, dude. Oh, I thought you had a giant, bro. What is that? Oh, my God. <laughs> That thing is huge, bro. What is it? That's a warm mouth. This is probably my favorite thing about a chatterbait. So, you know, you have your crawls, you have your jigs, you have your worms that you're flipping around, cover, you're flipping in these trees, whatever you're doing with them, you're slow moving baits and you can really get them in. You know, you can skip them under trees, skip them under docks, doing your whole deal. 
That's what I really like about a chatterbait, especially the standard one by Z-Man, is because you can actually skip this thing really fairly easy. So if you guys see this tree laying down right in the water, all you gotta do is simply, you know, skip this thing really easy and it glides across the water so well. That's what I love about that chatterbait. So you can't do that with a spinnerbait or anything. And why this is so good is because, you know, you got your crawls, worms, your jigs, that whole deal that you can skip under docks and skip around trees. But, you know, those are all slow moving baits. So this is actually a moving bait that's going to put off a lot of vibration. It's going to imitate a little bait fish and you can actually skip it in certain areas that you couldn't get another bait. And that's what I just really love about this chatterbait. That, that is probably one of my favorite things about this chatterbait and why I love throwing it. What? You did not have a fish. Oh my God. Come on. Show me, man. So I've yet to have a bite back here since I've been fishing this place. Oh my God, bro. Force a 10 pounder. Please get the net. Please get the net. Oh my god! Dang! <laughs> On a square fish? I think he got his eyeball. Oh my god. Here, I got a camera. That's like a seven. Oh my god. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Did you see? Oh my God, just get him in the bottom of the boat. I about had a heart attack, dude. I thought I had another 10. Dude, he choked it, bro. The freaking square bill. Oh my God. No. <laughs> oh my God, baby. Look at that giant right there. God, this is a giant. Freaking toad. Look at that, baby. There's a freaking giant right there. All the square bill absolutely choked it. Savannah River. <laughs> There's some giants in here, baby. Is that a bass? That's not a bad one. Well, everyone, I think that is going to conclude this video, but there are a few little things. God, Lee, Adam, Bob, Adam, Bob, Adam, Bob, Adam, Bob. <laughs> Adam, Bob, that was a close one, man. <laughs> Alright, so there are a few different things I would like to talk about. This bait right here, I am promising you guys, you guys mark my words, will catch big fish. If you guys take this out to wherever you're fishing and throw this bait, it will catch big fish. I mean, this look at this sexiness right there. Absolutely sexy. But take this to a pond, a lake, wherever you're at near you. Go throw this bait, and I want to see you guys commenting in the next couple of videos that you guys caught your PB or caught a big fish on this bait. But if you guys got some value out of this, and you want to let me know what tip videos you would like to see next, be sure to pepper that like button up. Leave a comment below on what how to fish videos you would like to see, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. I got sky like the brother man, uh I crack cars, get hella bands, uh I got a bra from the motherland, uh I got shooters with ass, uh I get it, get it, uh Anyway, uh Pull up skirt, in the hurricane, uh I crack cars, cook every day, uh I get money, uh Every day, uh